It's Brian Preston, the money guy. So let's talk about, because I will tell you, being wealth managers by day and having, because we both come from humble beginnings, but we have our children are kind of being raised in households that are completely different from the households we were raised in. Money and children and the relationship that all that creates can be scary because mm-hmm. I think that um, you know we a, a desired difficulty. You know, we, we if you read any of Malcolm Gladwell stuff, you know, w- look, I'm not don't mishear me on this, but it is I know a lot of people that growing up from humble beginnings actually puts a fire in your belly. I think people who have children who are financial mutants and you're wired differently where you are a builder of wealth versus a consumer mm-hmm. of wealth, you're worried that your kids are going to be complete disasters. Mm-hmm. So we went out on social media and we found the case study of what you are petrified of. <laughs> Your old daughter, Nicolette, is extravagant, spoiled, and bratty. Nicolette is beyond entitled. I have these two Chanel wallets. This one's my favorite because it really goes with this purse. Oh, yeah. I've raised a true Beverly Hills brat. I could definitely say we're quite affluent. My mom raised me with everything I've ever wanted, and she needs to continue. It's the only life I've ever known. Oh, Nicolette has continue. always had the best of anything and everything. I went to amazing schools. I had a driver. I had a nanny, personal trainers. At a very young age, Nicolette had her own credit cards with absolutely no credit limit. Some months, her credit card bills would be 10000 Oh, I just paid imagine? the bill. No. Nicolette had an allowance of $5,000 a month to cover her expenses. A month. I love designer clothes and shopping on Rodeo Drive just because it's so fun. I have some $5,000 Chanel bags, a couple of those. This is my favorite bag. It's a Celine micro luggage tote. I keep it on a chair because it's just so okay, special. I, gotta stop. It's about I, can't, I can't watch anymore. We got to stop this. That's 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 too much. That's unbelievable, right? So this if you are someone who's had success, if you are someone who's been able to build up an army of dollar bills, but you have young kids, this is the thing that you worry about. Me and you Brian talk all the time about how you already said it. Our children are going to have, Lord willing, a very different childhood than we had. The thing that I worry about is perhaps the childhood that I had growing up from extreme poverty and a lot of sacrifice and a lot of scarcity is not the childhood that my kids are going to grow up in, but I'm nervous because what are the things that I can do to not let my girls fall into that Nicolette path? You know, I think... You can tell a big influence on my financial career from finding the Millionaire Next Door book in the mid 90s and so much so that the signed copies on set here is that there's seven factors of wealth according to the Millionaire Next Door. And I think it's very interesting that two of the seven have to do with essentially children and money because parent number four, their parents did not provide economic outpatient Mm -hmm. care. Number five, their adult children are economically self-sufficient. And and just so you know, economic outpatient care, that's that parents aren't providing for adult children. So if you're not familiar with what that terminology is. Well, I think think this is showing me that you can Mm -hmm. love your children too much. You Mm -hmm. actually cause damage. I mean, that's what economic outpatient care is. and, And there's all kind of research on this is that you take two children, the one that's super independent, you know, and and then the parent tries to boost up the kid that's underperforming by throwing more resources Mm -hmm. at them. It doesn't actually help. It actually Mm -hmm. can impede their progress, their ability to build independence, their ability to develop skills. It's very counter to the whole love that you, you, that you just want to make sure your kids don't have a want but that is can be a very scary thing, and 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 that's with relationships. You have to pay attention to this knowledge. And if you look at the look at the data, this is according to Ma- according to Magnify Money. Twenty two percent of adults receive financial support from their parents. Twenty two percent of adults were not able to actually fly the nest, fly the coop. But it actually goes both ways, right? Because this is this was a New York Times article. This was I, this was a number of years ago. I can't remember what year it was. No, that was probably it was probably less than twenty four months. It was probably twenty four months ago. Uh, it says, "My retirement plan is you." Americans without retirement savings, Americans who have not been doing what they need to do financially are increasingly moving in with their millennial children. Could you imagine one day saying to Avery, hey, Aves, uh, so happy that you're doing so well in life. 
Congratulations. Uh, me and mom didn't plan at all. Uh, we're going to move in with you. We're going to come live in your basement. Hey, you remember that MacBook I gave you? Surprise! <laughs> gave you the skill set. Now I'm moving in the basement. You know, that that is, and we don't want that. We want everything to be positive. So let's kind of talk about what not to do. The first thing is you've got to make sure your children understand the difference between needs versus wants. Mm-hmm. And if you're giving them Everything that they desire, that's giving them all the wants they have, like we showed in that example where designer handbags, you know, any car that they want to consider a 5000 a month allowance. I mean, it just sounds weird coming out of my mouth. Your Their connection with money is going to be so distorted, they're not going to know a value of a dollar and not know how hard it is to create wealth as well. So you know they're, you're setting them up to be a consumer of wealth versus a builder, and that's a disaster in the long term. And and look, I think think you can do this with little things, right? Like this is a really simple, simple example. Uh, When when we take our girls out to eat, you know, when I was a kid, kid, I got water. Like there was no drinking Sprite or soft drinks or orange juice or fill in the blank. We drank water. Now, my parents did it not for the health factor. They did it because it was cheap. It was yeah. like the less expensive thing. I try to do that same thing with my girls, right? When we go out to eat and they say, hey, what's like your drink? I say, oh, you probably want water, right? One, it's healthier for them, not all sugar, all that kind of stuff. But I also want them to recognize it just because we could afford to buy them a soft drink every time we go out to dinner or every time we go to lunch doesn't mean that we should because I want them to understand that there are economic ramifications to making those kinds of decisions. Well, scarcity is your friend in some ways. I mean, I always think about, I mean, in my neighborhood, I look at the cars that the kids are getting and I'm like, where do you go from here? It's I insane. mean, because if, if you insane. start at nice, like a brand new F-150 or something like that, what are they building for? Mm-hmm. I mean, one of my favorite things is I started off with a jalopy. <laughs> And then when I got my first job, I got a Slightly nicer jalopy. jalopy that I paid for <laughs> myself. And then when I bought that first nice used car, that then transitioned to my first brand new car, mm-hmm. which wasn't luxury or nice. But then I, when I got the first luxury car that I bought for myself, I mean, there was a whole journey that felt very fulfilling and created a lot of happiness mm-hmm. for me. If you like in that example, there's another clip we didn't choose. She was looking at G wagons as a oh, high wow. school student, and then there's a McLaren in our neck of the woods mm-hmm. that I know is driven by a high school kid. It's insane. And I'm like, what are these parents thinking, giving them everything because the relationship with money is broken, as well as the happiness of mm-hmm. desiring, building, growing, and then reaching the other side of the journey? That's not going to be there. You have nowhere to go but down. So here's another what not to do. And this is going to be a little counterintuitive, specifically coming from the Money Guy show. Don't make your kids save all their money. If you're doing that, you're actually setting up another type of unhealthy relationship with money. Money is a tool to allow us to do the things we want to do. It allows us to do the things we want to do now, and it allows us to do the things we want to do in the future. Well, if you're just forcing your kids to save every dollar, save every dollar, save every dollar they're probably naturally going to rail against that. They're probably naturally going to say, I don't like this savings thing. I'm being forced to this. This isn't something that I find valuable. So you got to figure out a way to find balance. you got to figure out a way to not create that type of environment. Well, I always think about like college. When's the first time you have true freedom? And this isn't necessarily money, but you will see what I mean by this with being too overbearing with your guidance on anything is all the people that I knew from college that went, Hog wild. Mm-hmm. I mean, meaning had no discipline, were skipping classes, <laughs> staying out at the bars because it was the first time. Whereas you typically came from very overbearing parents, yep. meaning that, that there was no semblance of them making the critical thinking or knowing how you balance discipline and, and, and so forth that they, they really did go hog wild with mm-hmm. the whole thing. Same thing happens if you make your if you're too overbearing with how your kids are supposed to save their money, you will foster a rebellious behavior environment. It's better to teach them the skills so that they can start making good decisions as they as they get older. And then here's the last what not to do. Don't sacrifice your own financial future for your kids. It's so counterintuitive because we all want to provide and protect and take care of our children. But there's a reason when you're on an airplane, they tell you got to put the oxygen mask on yourself before you can put it on your kids. You cannot 
actually help them in the way they need to be helped if you are sacrificing your own financial foundation for their benefit. So make sure you're not doing that. Make sure you are setting an example for them of the right way to use money, the right way to approach money, the right way to make financial decisions. And you'll be doing more for them than by just handing them a blank check. Well, let's talk about what to do because I, I like I, I hate being just only negative, not giving the positive side of things. I think the first thing, don't be scared to have conversations with your children, mm -hmm. even starting at a young age, that open understanding with how a dollar is earned, how is a dollar is saved, how a dollar is invested is going to pay off tremendously in the long term. If they are feeling like, mm -hmm. hey, we're flush, this is easy, they'll never have that healthy relationship with the resources. Yeah, and if you want to get them excited about it, help them understand the eighth wonder of the world. Help them understand compounding interest. We actually have a deliverable. You can go to money guy.com slash resources. And this shows our wealth multiplier for young savers, meaning maybe you have a six or seven year old and you're having your first conversation. You know, my, oh, I didn't even tell you. It's amazing. Uh, my daughter lost her second tooth at Disney. We okay. were at Disney last week. And it was so amazing. Would you believe not only did the tooth fairy bring uh, my daughter two bucks because it was her second tooth, <laughs> Mickey Mouse actually had a signed letter with a little tooth necklace. Oh, that wow. the Tooth Fairy brought. So I think Tinkerbell talked to Tooth Fairy and they brought it. So I had to have a conversation with my daughter on, okay, what are we going to do with our $2, right? How are we going to handle that? I haven't quite gotten there because she's not quite five yet, but I would love to tell her, do you realize, sweetheart, if you took one of those $2 and we put that to work for you today, that $1 can turn into $394 for you by the time you get to retirement. That's how powerful it can be. You can use these tools, especially if you have like a young child in your house who's doing chores or babysitting or fill in the blank. Show them, hey, if you're a 12 year old, if you can just save 40 bucks a month starting right now, by the time you get to age 65, you'll be a millionaire. That kind of stuff will set in and it will get them excited about becoming financial mutants. Well, I, I'm, I'm entertaining myself because I'm sitting, you, this is the problem when you tell me stuff I don't know because I'm sitting here wondering, <laughs> is the tooth fairy going to pay? In a linear fashion or exponential, meaning that the first tooth was a dollar, the second tooth is two dollars. Does that mean the third tooth is going to be four dollars, and then we're going to go sixteen dollars, and then we're going to? Do you see how this I is all kind of I don't growing to, upon itself? She will conquer the world by the time she has all of her baby teeth out. I don't want to pretend to know how the tooth fairy works. Uh, <laughs> here's what I know has happened for her older sister. At about five teeth, it started getting kind of expensive. Oh, we've so Tooth Fairy, I think, kind of went and started getting some different, some like some little toys or maybe like a lollipop, you know, something like that. Uh, so I don't think it's going to continue on in that fashion, but who knows? Tooth Fairy does what Tooth Fairy wants. I think the big takeaway, moneyguy.com slash resources. <laughs> right. Look at the wealth multiplier. Get them excited about money because that leads to then encouraging them to earn extra money. That's I got to right. tell you, one of the greatest things that I, is my daughter's about to go off to college, her getting a job. I mean, she is such a much more effective communicator. She understands how crazy the real world is because she is working at a fast food joint, yep. working the cash register at a fast food restaurant has helped her. Now, look, she could go get another job that would pay her more money. And I, um, she could come work here and probably make more money. But I wanted to get that real life skill set with the general public of dealing with money, with taking orders from people, dealing with the crazy of society and actually building some the appreciation of what work can do. It, it's been very powerful for her. And then I think this is another great thing you can do as your children get older, let them have some real world opportunities. With my kids, once they get old enough, or once they, my oldest got old enough, when she gets money, we have a give, sp give save, spend piggy bank. Now, yeah. I haven't got to investing, and I don't have her picking out any stocks or anything like that yet, but she knows every time she gets money, a part goes to give, a part goes to save, a part goes to spend. You gave your daughter a very real world, real life example of how to purchase an automobile. Yeah. Well, there's, there's multiple, I mean, I made, if, if you're curious, what have I done since I have a daughter who's 18 years old is I made her pay for half her car. Yep. I mean, I so that it. means, and, and look, you realize a, a kid working fast food and babysitting and stuff that you can't go buy a new car with that much money. I mean, you have to go buy a car that doesn't have the latest and greatest safety things. And, I, and that was a real 
hard decision saying, hey, I can afford to go buy her the latest and greatest, but is that the right thing? I chose no. I'm going to buy her the the, the, the 12, let her buy half of a 12 to 14 year old car yep. and learn how this whole concept works. And I think it's been very healthy because then that leads to the second point of real world opportunities. I do a dollar for dollar match on her retirement funding. So, so she has a Roth IRA that I have been, ever since she started working, I'm giving her a dollar for dollar match. By the way, just two days ago, we put another fifteen hundred dollars in that oh, account, awesome. and that money. You, if you take that wealth multiplier, if you go to moneyguy.com/resources, it's going to be worth a fortune. I mean, I am so excited for her that she already has five figures in her Roth IRA from just doing before this she strategy. even leaves for college. Yeah, she's not That's even in awesome. college yet, and it's all because I've encouraged, and she actually seeks this out now. I mean, if I owe her money or something for something she does, she'll be like, "Hey, why don't we just consider that part of my my Roth contribution?" and you go load up the other half and let's make it happen. That is teaching real world skills that will serve her well for the rest of her life.